Hey, how you doing? Scott here from Scott's Bass Lessons. Hope you're well. And we have got another bass riff of the week for you. I think it's number seven this time. And this one's a little bit different. I kind of got into, and by the way, everything you see today, you'll be able to get the tavern notation. Just hit the link below this video and follow the instructions on the page and it will be emailed to you. So check that out. Um, so with this riff, I'm a huge police fan, um, Sting, you know, and in the uh, Scott Space Lessons Academy, where we have all the full courses and the, the forum and the community and things, one of our members has been um, talking about Sibling, one of our members, hi Sibling, um, she'd been talking about singing and playing and she'd been doing some, or she was doing some police tunes, some Sting stuff, and, I, and it kind of just sort of like made me kind of like start listening to them again. And one of the, my favorite tunes that they did is, uh, you know, and it's these kind of stamped fifths. So root fifth and nine, root fifth and nine, root fifth and nine, you know, that kind of thing. And I thought it'd be cool if I created a riff around that kind of concept, um, but over a, over a static chord. So the static chord that we've got is just an E minor and then I'm using a whole load of stacked fifths over that E minor to get different sounds. And what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the riff in this lesson and then in a few days time I'm going to do another lesson actually talking about the specifics of how you can stack fifths these shapes. Oh. over minor chords and major chords and things like that. It's a really cool effect. You can put it in your solo lines, your riffs and things like that. So look out for that lesson. It's coming in a couple of days time. But today I'm just gonna break that riff down for you, okay? So up to full speed, it was a Just so you can get that under in your fingers, let's take a look at that really slow. One, two, three, Now when you're doing this, I'm gonna slow it down for you even more by the way, uh, but when you're doing this, just watch the stretches, it's the really big stretches, and you can actually, you don't have to, you know, hold that position, you could. Can you hear, see how the hand's moving like this? Now I've got the, Adva well, it's not an advantage. Well, it is an advantage to a certain extent. I've got big hands, so I can do that. But, you know, I've seen countless videos of, you know, young kids around sort of like 13, 14 year olds absolutely tearing it up on the bass with these big, you know, with these massive long lines. And they're not stretching so much. Their hands are tiny, you know. And what they're doing is shifting like this. something to bear in mind if you have got small hands that the shifts in between notes are super super important it's why I can play two notes like this instead of doing this I'm just shifting between the two notes like that first finger to the fourth finger and it really helps me because I'm not having to do this it's, it comes from the the finger per fret thing. So the finger per fret thing is where people play a finger per fret. And it, and it is cool, but it's kind of a, a technique that's been adopted for guitar players by bass players. You know, a lot of guitar players have come across the bass or a lot of bass players are taught, especially in schools, by guitar players 
then they teach this finger perfect thing. And it, and it does work to a certain extent, but when you get down low here, it really, you know, you start stretching too much. So it's worth taking into consideration that even though you are assigning a finger per fret, you're not supposed to keep them on as you're moving across the fingerboard because it's especially not in this area because you will overstretch and get hand pain. Um, so now we've listened to the, 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 the riff at kind of medium tempo, I'm going to really break down, really break it down and show you really slowly so you can get it under your fingers. So let's check that out. Two, three, four. So you're going to hear it again up to speed at the end of this video, but remember in a few days time we're going to release another lesson where I'm going to talk about why this actually works, why you can use you know, all these over E minor. It's a really, really cool technique that you should get in your soloing and your grooving as well. Um, you can. Uh, I can't speak today. You can download all of the tab and the notation for this and the backing track if you click the link below this video. It will take you to a page just to follow the instructions. And other than that, go over to scottspacelessons.com and check the stuff out if you haven't already. It's super badass. So take it easy and I'll see you in the shed.